Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Experience Maker. This is Dan Genghis, customer experience speaker and coach. So happy to have you with us today, the last episode of October. I can't believe that we're already entering November. And speaking of time flying by, my guest today was actually supposed to be the second guest on this series all the way back in February, 35 weeks later. We finally got her on the show. I'm so excited. She is a speaker, an author, a business consultant, the incomparable Bella Vasta. Welcome to the show, Bella. Hey, Dan. I'm so excited to finally be here with you. This has been a long time coming. It has been. It was like a mirage for a long time, and we kept crossing uh, crossing at the paths at the wrong time, but glad we finally made it work, and I'm super excited to talk with you. Um, for those that don't know you or your work, why don't you tell us a little bit about you? Um, so I started a pet sitting company back in 2002 as a way to get out of my parents' home and off of their curfew. Little did I know I would grow that to a six-figure uh, nationally and locally award-winning business that I later sold after I had my micro preemie daughter born at 12 ounces. Uh, in the middle of all of that, I also started consulting and coaching, helping businesses scale from six to seven figures. Realized that's my true passion. I like never work a day in my life, as they say. And I also, like you mentioned, I'm also a speaker on leadership, sales, and Facebook groups. That is awesome. Wow. A lot to unpack there in that very short answer. So um, I, you still have your, your Twitter profile is still uh, Bella's Pets. Uh, so it's definitely still a uh, part of sort of your, your brand. Are you completely out of it now or are you, or are you running uh, groups with other pet sitters? Yeah. So here's the funny thing about that. And if you or your listeners have any like pull with Twitter, I'd love it. I tried so long ago to switch it over to Bella Vasta. So all my socials could be the same. Um, but somehow or another, something's locked and I can't do it. And Bella's Pets was something I made, I don't know, probably 20 years ago now. And so I'm just stuck with that. But to answer your question directly, yes, I host a uh, mastermind for pet sitters. I've got two free groups for pet sitters. That's how I've really been building my community since about 2010 uh, on Facebook and how I was able to really stay connected and survive with them while I went through my own personal catastrophe which was fighting for my daughter's life in NICU for six months, uh, day in and day out for eight to 10 hours a day. Um, that, those groups really allowed me to be able to kind of congregate my people all in one place and still be able to reach them and have that like personal connection. Um, and, and so, yeah, so that's, that's where my love affair for groups come. I, I lovingly say that uh, without groups, I, I would not be where I am today. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That's great. And I'm glad that it helped you through a tough situation. And now you're you're helping other people, which is fantastic. Uh, you also have a ton of fans. Uh, a number of them uh, are uh, posting as we speak. Uh, Ryan Break Baker uh, says, what a great duo. Um, Chris Strub uh, is very excited hey, about finally your scheduling and says uh, that you're one of the hardest workers uh -huh. that he has ever met. And coming from Chris, uh, that is, uh, that's definitely a, um, a compliment, I know. Um, and uh, and I, I can't remember, is it, the, is it Chris that introduced us or was it uh, Joey that introduced us? I think it was Chris. And because okay. uh, Chris was talking about his best friend, Dan Genghis. And, uh, and he kept talking about you. And I was like, I have to meet this person. Who is he? And uh, that was probably about two years ago. And then I found out that you were closely connected with Joey Coleman, who I am just a big fan of. I love that man. He's amazing. Um, and actually, we talk probably on the monthly about... Uh, his book, How to Lo Never Lose Customer, or in the 100 Days. Yeah. yeah, sorry. And and we just, we're, we're always enacting that 100 Days uh, methodology too, so. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. So, let, so let's talk briefly, uh, before we get into the broader business consulting that you do, yeah. uh, let's talk about the cross-section of the pet sitting business and customer experience. And I think what's yeah. so interesting, because I've been doing some writing uh, recently about uh, telehealth, and in particular in the veterinary industry, which mm -hmm. is so fascinating because obviously... Vets can't talk to the pets over over a Skype or a Zoom, uh, so they're only talking to the pet owners. But it's an it's an interesting industry in that there are two sets of customers: the the pet itself and then the pet owner. So tell me a little bit about how you approach it. 
Yeah. So first of all, I would love any literature that you're reading about that because I'd love to give it to my own community to pass it along. One thing that 2020 has really shown us is that there's a lot that can be done without actually seeing people. And that does definitely translate to the pet industry. Um, the, the, the companies that are really thriving through this crisis, through this pandemic, are the ones that are pivoting and doing things like that. Not telehealth, but just instead of coming for a consultation face-to-face, -face, they're actually doing it over camera. Um, one of our good friends too, Marcus Sheridan, he came into my group and kind of gave the whole lowdown and laid out a blueprint of like, this is how you can do a consultation. And it's so weird because we have so many self-limiting beliefs that we can't really actually go forward with business and make it happen. Uh, through this pandemic, or we all have to stay away from each other, which we do, but there's ways around it and there's technology. And it's been really fascinating to see how people have gone from um, like, oh no, I, I don't, I can't be on camera to now like everyone from a three-year-old to like your 94-year-old grandmother and everyone in between are just so comfortable on camera. In fact, I was joking last week with my friends. I said, eventually we're going to be like, like laughing about Zoom, like we did about MySpace. So we're gonna be like, <laughs> remember when we had those like those black squares? Because it's gonna it's gonna improve and grow, and I just I can't wait to see what's gonna happen. But it is and actually speaking of pets, I keep waiting for Zoom to make one very small feature change. Can you guess what it is? Uh, to turn off the dog barking. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about to turn off the doorbell when somebody enters, which causes the dog barking? <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, yes, that too. Can yep. we just have any other sound oh other than a doorbell, please? Right? Oh, my God. I didn't even think of that. I didn't even think of that. That's hilarious. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's an amazing ride. I definitely agree. And uh, you may or may not know, I actually just finished the manuscript for my second book. And I, uh, at, the, at the very end, had a, a whole chapter on COVID because I felt like I couldn't ignore it. But I mentioned in there just what you said, which is that both my 12-year-old daughter mm -hmm. and my 76-year-old mother mm -hmm. have learned Zoom this year and yeah. are both comfortable with it and very good at it. Yeah. They have learned it, obviously, for different reasons. But uh, yeah, there's really no more excuses for not being able to get onto video in some way, shape, or form. And I do think we're finding out more and more that people are more comfortable doing things that uh, remotely than they were before. Um, and I think that's going to translate to companies that are going to be more comfortable having their employees work remotely than they were before. I, I worked for several companies that I know would never have considered having people work from home. And now their entire workforce is working from home. And yeah. so I, I do think a lot of this stuff is going to stick around. Uh, and the more that we can do for people remotely, even post pandemic, it's still easier. It's still faster. It can be real time. Uh -huh. uh, and I think that's a lot of what people are demanding. 100% agree with you. It's actually, I feel like, and what I tell my pet sitters is that you're a threat. You are now a threat to our clients when you say and insist that you need to do a face-to-face -face consultation and you need to come to the house and walk around and get their key and do all this stuff. Like if, if I can do a telehealth with my doctor and she can examine me or, or assess me that way, or we can do that with our dog at the vet, surely to do pet sitting and dog walking, you can do that as well. And so I find it's really interesting to see everyone's self-limiting beliefs coming off and how that's like prohibiting even better customer service. And to your point about um, all of these places that they're going to stay home, it's something I've been telling my pet sitters too, because our old problem we were solving, Dan, was that people were away for eight to 10 hours a day and they needed their dog walked in the middle of the day. Well, guess what? Now we need the dog walked in the morning before our calls start, so they're tired, or when we're meeting with the boss, just get the dog out of the house. You know what I mean? Like yeah. problems are changing that we are solving as from a customer service standpoint. And we need to wake up and realize that, or you're gonna get lost in the thing. And the last thing I'll say is, is um, I love your point about staying home, but you know, there's also a ripple effect from that as well. The the commercial real estate industry is gonna start feeling it. You're gonna start seeing a lot more places just being empty and vacate, va vacated. And we could sit there on only that part of the story and say, oh no, but what about this other part of the story where there's innovators coming in and saying, okay, now we got all these empty office spaces or these empty big spaces. What are we going to do with them? How are we going to do it? What yeah. happens if the movie theaters start crumbling down? What are we going to do in that space? Like there is, 
There's two ways to look at this, you guys. Oh no, boo hoo, or hell yeah, let's make it happen. And that's really the only two options you have. I couldn't agree more. And, you know, I've already seen stories about some of these empty commercial real estate locations being turned into affordable housing or to other type of use cases that yep. may not have existed in the past. And that does seem to me, uh, you know, somebody asked me the other day, what are sort of some of the words that we're going to remember about this time? And, oh, you know, I think from a customer experience perspective, it's really two things. I do believe that safety is going to now always be something that we have to think about, that yeah. people are not going to walk into our stores or invite a pet sitter into our home if we don't feel safe with them. And yeah. that I think is going to be a, a permanent fundamental change in the experience. But the other thing is innovation. And we always used to throw out this, this term of innovation. But when people were forced to innovate, when companies were forced to innovate and do it very, very quickly, it is amazing some of the stuff that has evolved from it that, again, I think will still be here far after the pandemic is over. I keep using the example that uh, I'm a guy that actually likes to grocery shop. But mm -hmm. once I realized that I could save an hour and a half every weekend by doing curbside pickup, I'm not sure I want to give that hour and a half back. Right. Yeah. And that's just one example of how our lives have changed in the last few months, probably for the better. Um, so tell us a little bit about what have you been up to personally and, and business wise um, during COVID and how have you had to adapt your business? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so first, uh, my content plan for Q2 and Q3 was like, whoop, out the window. Um, and what we decided to do at Jump Consulting was to buckle down and show up for people. So I understood that everyone, including myself, and I'm sure you, are going through, like, we went through this, like, grieving stage at first. Like, whoa, what's happening? And we were angry and shocked and and trying to bargain and, uh, and, and negotiate. And, like, this isn't really happening. Yes, it is. And what do we do? And the shock and horror after that, that wore off. But while that was happening with all my clients, I was on the phone with my members and crying with them on the phone. Like I really, cause that you can't, you can't fake being a coach and a consultant. Right. And so what I did is I opened up a two week Facebook group, haha, -ha, big, big surprise. And I packed it full of leaders that were um, financial CPAs, HR, you know, how to furlough and lay off, like all this stuff that people never had to really deal with before financial advisors, uh, marketing people, um, all kinds. And we just went for two whole weeks and we recorded all of it and put it into a package so that they could watch it. Cause I understood that everyone couldn't show up that day, but it also was kind of a good distraction. Along with that, we've been, um, you know, I have a marketing agency aspect of jump consulting. And so we stepped up and over delivered and it was like, okay, we could either say a, Oh, you don't have to pay your bill or we'll discount it. Like some of the software companies in our industry were doing, or B I'm going to flood you with value. And I'm a value girl. Like I will, go to, I'll make that touchdown with you. Like I am, I am so passionate about that as if you can't tell. And so what we did is we started creating graphics with these people, like a dog on its belly, belly up says flatten the curve on the top of it. Or like a dog looking out the window saying, I know why my dog barks every time something comes by now. Or like, you know, like, what are we barking at? Like they were just funny things, but they were relevant. So what yeah. we did, is we just, we adapted to the times and we showed up where people needed it. We also understood where they were, but there's one thing and it's kind of interesting because I get a lot of flack for it too, um, which I'm personally still working through, is that I want to cast this vision of hope. I'm, I'm not going down, I'm fighting. And so the people that want to fight with me are like, yeah, the ones that don't want to fight with me are like, how dare you? You should be in your house. You should have your mask on. You shouldn't leave your house and all this stuff. And I think right now, the biggest lesson that our entire world can like, like learn right now is acceptance and not judgment, but acceptance. So Dan, if that's what you want to do and you want to stay in your house, it's cool. And if I don't want to do that, that's cool too. Like, but this, like, we need to be responsible. We, as business owners, we need to take calculated risks. We also need to realize that that you know the PPP and the EIDL that is great, but it's just a band aid. It's a crutch. It is part of a strategy. It's not gonna. It's not gonna be your saving grace. You know. So like this COVID cover 
was, this is what we've been calling it, a COVID cover, has been giving us the most, and I'm sure you guys have talked about this or heard this before, it's given you the biggest gift that you will ever get in your business, in your entire life, and that's the gift of time. Because I know that your to-do list had to-do lists, and you were you were buried, and oh my gosh, if I just have more time. Well, guess what? You were given that time. What did you do with it? What did you do with it? Or did you realize like, hey, we're going to restructure this or we're going to build this up better or we're going to examine this? I was just on a coaching call with a gal today who cut back some of her services and we were talking about the analogy like, you know, she's like a tree where you trim it back so that you can come back stronger. And that's exactly what it was because things just start, you know, as we were in the tunnel and we're building businesses and and things just happen, it just things overgrow, right? And and we don't realize it until we're like suffocated by it. And we're like, oh shoot, that's not working. But COVID was allowed to give us this breather, this moment so that we could see what wasn't working, fix it hopefully, and come back stronger. Because at least in the pet industry, not everyone's coming back from this. Not everyone's coming back. There's gonna be a lot of businesses that don't come back. And it's the businesses um, I could speculate things, but they're not going to come back. We'll, we'll just stay on the positive that the ones that get through it are going to have even more of a market share. And that excites me for them. That excites me. And I'm so proud of just being able to be there rah, rah, shush, kumbha, next to them. And Hey guys, did you try this? Hey, did we do this? I came up with like 14 different ways to talk about COVID and your business to people. And it was, you know, just new. So remember your humanity is what will continue to remain stable. Yes. I was just thinking about that as you were talking because I was at this event earlier this morning uh, for Macovio. This is uh, Bozema St. John, who's an amazing CMO of Netflix. She was at Apple. Oh, cool she was that you got to see that. Yeah, and that is what she said. And you were basically saying the same thing. So uh, yeah. two, two smart women in one day essentially saying the same thing. But I couldn't agree with you more. And so sorry for interrupting, but I was uh, no. just trying to get that tweet up there. I was wondering um, where you went, and I was wondering how long I should keep going for. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. I, I, I go just, all day. <laughs> no, yeah, it's all but, good, and it, but it's you're totally right, and um, and I do I love your point about uh, you know looking at this as either sort of let's hole up and feel sorry for ourselves, or let's grab the bull by the horns and do something about it. And I, again, I feel sorry. Sorry, I was saying you got two choices. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that, that is pretty much it. And and you're right. There's a lot of businesses that that kind of have decided well, we're going to fold up the tent. We don't think this is going to work. And then there's so much innovation out there, and so many people doing different things. I'm yeah. doing a lot now that I never expected to do. That's actually the, the fastest part of my growing part of my business right now is content creation. That is not what I set out to do. That is not what I thought my business was going to be about. But you know yeah. what? When all my speaking gigs went dark, like yours did, yeah. um, you know, on March, uh, I think I got off the stage on March 10th, and by about March 17th, they were all gone. Yeah. Uh, had to do something. And, uh, and so, and now I feel like, um, number one, I, I feel proud of myself that I've survived this and I sort of feel like, okay, if I can survive this, then, you know, bring it on any, we can yeah. survive anything. Yeah. Um, but also these are these things that even you and I are doing at this time are parts of our business that are going to keep going after not just COVID parts of our business, they're COVID proof parts of yeah. our business. And I think yeah. that's what's so exciting about it uh, is that it'll actually, I mean, I'm, I, we're all looking forward to this being over, um, but I think the sky's the limit when we get past this. Oh my gosh. It's, it's going to be like gangbusters. It really is because people are getting stronger and leaner right now. Um, the, the smarter ones and, and the innovation part also excites me. I wrote probably the longest blog I've ever written in my life. It was 4,000 words. It was so long that I also read it in a podcast because I knew not everyone was going to read it. But one of the sections in there was about innovation. And it was about like what happened in 2008 when the stock market crashed. And it was about all of the different businesses that came from that. And it was also about, you know, Sony having the, um, the, the, the software to actually do um, an iPod and stuff. But they didn't know how or they, they limited themselves because they didn't know how to get over the licensing part of it. So here comes Apple. I'm like, okay, we'll do it then. If you don't do it, we'll do it. And that's yeah. kind of what I, what I see happening and is going to happen. And I'm just I'm excited to see what does flourish and, and, and create and grow. I mean, we already knew that video was the way of the future. Now it's undoubtedly like 
you can't argue with that anymore. Like it just went on like fast track this year. Well, and I also want to mention to folks that are watching or listening to this that are saying, well, you know, I'm not Amazon. I'm not Apple. I can't do this. The thing is, is that you can't be Amazon and Apple. We already have an Amazon and an Apple and, and they are amazing at what they do. But that doesn't mean that our job is to copy them. Our job is actually to do what we do really, really well. So great example that we, uh, I just recorded an episode uh, with our mutual friend, Joey, of uh, the experience this show, our podcast. And we talked about a new bookstore that opened up in Taiwan that is, that allows uh, customers to view books completely in the dark. The whole bookstore is dark except for these very dim lights right over the books on the shelves. And they actually look like, it looks like something out of Harry Potter. They look like they're floating on the shelves. Okay. And the whole idea is, you know, you rob someone of one sense, the other ones become more, uh, you know, hypersensitized. And mm-hmm. it's this amazing experience. Well, one of the things we talked about was, this is a great example of something Amazon can't do, right? They can't yeah. turn the light bulb on you, right? And yet yeah. here's a bookstore a bookstore, you know, that is a, it's an industry, a physical bookstore is an industry I think we've all written for dead in the last couple of years. And yet this one is innovating, doing something totally different and drawing crowds to it because they're giving people an experience. And I believe personally that any business can do that. Any yeah. business can compete against the big guys by, by creating an experience where one doesn't already exist. Another great example that I've shared once or twice before, I think even on this show, is there's a, there's a store in Chicago that uh, is a game and toy store. And my family are big uh, board game players. Mm-hmm. And I walked into this store and the first thing that happened is the woman behind the counter said, oh, so you like Settlers of Catan. Well, you're going to love this this game and this game and this game. I'm like She's like a walking Amazon. But the yeah. best part was at the back of the store, they had a library where you could check out games, sit at a table and actually play them before you buy them. Here's something else that Amazon can't do, right? Or can't do yet, maybe they will someday. Um, But again, it's a great example of here's a retailer showing some innovation and creating an experience for people. And then it's okay that their games are a couple dollars more than Amazon because people are gonna pay for it. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's just like the, um, I love those examples. And what was your podcast name again, for those who didn't catch it? Experience This. Thank you, Bella. <laughs> awesome. Um, I, you mentioned uh, the Instacart thing. And I, I, um, I loved that example because for the longest time, you know, I was like, I'm not doing Instacart. Like it's so much more expensive. Like, first of all, there's the monthly fee or the, the yearly fee. And then they jack up the rates on what I'm going to buy. I could just go there and buy it easier. And then I'm like, actually, it's not so bad. Because when I do go there to go get chips and I don't know, dip, right? (laughs) And I come out $80 later, because I saw all these other things, or I was hungry when I went in there, you know, like it, um, and and one of my girlfriends did this too. She's like, no, 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 like, I dare you. She's like, go to the store and, and for whatever's on your list and, and write down the, the, the amount and then do it from home with whatever's on your list. And it, it, it's funny because like our self, our mind sometimes limits us and it's like, yes, we're paying for that convenience. We're paying for that experience of not having to do it. And it just shows up miraculously. Now I'm all, uh, A L E X I A add whatever to my shopping list, you know, and I don't even have to write it. It's just, things are changing and business. It's so owner- funny that you spelled that because I, I do that too. Otherwise we would have both had ours uh, talking back to us. Right. Yeah. It's and fantastic. Anyway- <laughs> That's fantastic. And you just described, by the way, uh, every Costco trip I've ever made is I, I can't possibly go in there even with a list and not walk out with 10 items I didn't come in there for. I, I um, call it the adult club, there. Dan. The adult club Sorry? where you should give them 100 bucks when you walk in. It's yeah. it's like the new club, like but it's daytime <laughs> for moms exactly. and dads. Well, pro tip, I force myself to only go once a month. <laughs> oh, wow. If I went more often, I'll just buy more often. So uh, anyway, so we're about to um, 
finish up here, but I wanted to ask you, um, what do you see coming up next in uh, in the business world? Obviously, uh, in the U.S., we have a big election next week, which may not change everything. Uh, we're still hoping that, that this COVID thing is uh, behind us sometime in 2021. But what are you most looking forward to as you look ahead in your own business for the next, let's say, uh, six months or so? Uh, what am I looking forward to in my business or out there in general? Like, in general my, what are you, what are you in your uh, consulting clients? In mine, I'm excited because I just brought on the most amazing uh, number two or OBM for me. And um, it was like love at first sight. I've never fallen in love with anyone that I've worked with like this and this platonic. And she's amazing. And the things that we're doing, we just um, redid all my SOPs. It's like 174 pages and like 200 support videos that go with it and all this stuff that we've been able to do right now. Like, I mean, we actually have been busy, but we've also done it this year. And I'm really excited to see how that's going to help reshape my company going forward because I've reached my own plateau as to how far I can get with me being the manager and like the point person. So now that I get to kind of get out of that, I'm really excited. And I'm excited to like get all these like massive ideas and visions and things I want to do out of my head. Cause I'm a, I'm a, I'm an implementer. I, I, dream things and I make it happen. And sometimes it doesn't work out, but that's all being an entrepreneur. It's fun for me, you know? And uh, sure. I've, been, I've been really bottlenecked. So I'm really excited about that. And I can't wait to see what happens in the next six months now that I've got the right people around me. You know, it's so funny you say that because uh, I just hired uh, my second virtual assistant. The first one didn't work out very well. Um, this one is going to work out very well and confident. Um, but you know, I, it was the, the one thing I just never planned on, uh, working for myself. I mean, I make the joke, you've probably heard me say, I like working for the Dan better than I like working for the man. So I'm not going <laughs> back. But the one thing is that when it's just me, myself and I all the time, mm -hmm. you know, you can't bounce ideas off yourself, right? You got to sometimes you need somebody to talk to, uh, yeah. and, and then some ideas by, or, uh, just help with some things. And, uh, I'm really excited about that too. Cause I do think it's this kind of an important next step, uh, mm -hmm. on the, in the journey. Um, so Bella, I, uh, I wish you the best. Uh, I love following your career and, uh, and all of your awesome content that you put out there. Um, I think you're doing great stuff. You've got these amazing Facebook groups. Uh, people are turning to you as an expert. I've seen you on stage at Social Media Marketing World. You're a great speaker uh, and I'm proud to call you my friend. So thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Dan. It takes one to know one, my friend. <laughs> well, uh, you are awesome. And hopefully we uh, will get to hug again soon. I look forward to it. Absolutely. All right. So thank you also for joining us, uh, audience members out there. Next week, we also we have our first double guest appearance, which I'm super excited. I'm going to be welcoming next week Michael Houlihan and Bonnie Harvey. You may or may not know their names, but they are the founders of a little company called Barefoot Wines, the number one wine company in the United States. Unbelievable. And they now run a company called Barefoot Spirit, which is helping authors create audiobooks that are unlike any audiobook you have ever experienced. Super cool. I can't wait to talk with them next week. Join me on Thursday and every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm Dan Gingis, customer experience speaker and coach. You can find me at dangingis.com. We'll see you next week. Have a terrific weekend.